Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean Hackett for another sermon, this one entitled A Lesson to Learn. So before we jump into this one, I'd like to thank all those who have shared the videos, those who are subscribing, those who are liking. Um, I really do appreciate every single one of you all who are stepping out of the box and uh, clicking those buttons on those end of the pages. So without any further ado, let's jump into this message titled again, A Lesson to Learn. So, this slide is titled, Compared to You. I keep hearing all throughout, you know, many churches I see and just speaking to many Christians on a daily basis. And for some reason, we like to compare ourselves to those in the Bible who have sinned to justify our own means of sinning. And you just can't do something like that. When you're comparing yourself to Moses, when you're comparing yourself to David, I mean, these are things that you just should not do. But this one, uh, this chapter coming from David, this Psalms 119, uh, verse 153 to 160, uh, this is coming from David, and it's interesting how he speaks to God here. And I just want us to just pay close attention to it. Um, and just take knowledge of the next time you may want to say something like this. It says, you know, consider my affliction in 153 and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. So first he's, you know, painting a picture for us here. He's setting a standard. He's saying, you know, first consider my affliction. Consider the wrong things that I've done and deliver me. Consider all the people who want to hate me. Consider all those who want to destroy me. And deliver me. For I do not forget thy law. So what does this mean? This means that, you know, although he is flesh, he is mindful to keep the law in his heart. So let's keep reading. It says, plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Now, we all know that David was a man after God's own heart. So this is why he's saying here, plead my cause. He's speaking directly to God. Now, I'm trying to show you the relationship that he had in this short scripture. He says, plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. So he just doesn't want to know the word. He wants that before he steps in to do wrong, he wants you to quicken him. Now, if you read in Isaiah, there's also something talking about um, there's a mystery or a revelation about Jesus Christ and how he says he'll be quickened. So in that same sense, be mindful. He doesn't just want the word. He doesn't just want knowledge of the word. He wants understanding. He wants the wisdom. He wants the quickening of the word to be in him. Not just that it comes to his mouth readily, but that he could do it readily. In 155, it says, Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. So some may look at David and say, hey, that you're being a little harsh because you've done many things that weren't right. But you're forgetting the mind frame. You're forgetting the nation that he led. You're forgetting in all the things in which he forsook in order to seek God. You're forgetting the fact that he spoke to God. You see, many of us are still in that point where we're imagining, is that God? Is that what does God want in our life? Does he want us to stay in this marriage? Does he want us to go to school? Does he want us to work this job? You know, he's a sure deal, David. David is sure of what God wants for him. And so that's why he could turn around and judge. You remember that thing that I told you um, in that scripture with judge not. If you haven't seen it, check that video out. It's judge not. And where it says that, you know, it's not so much that God doesn't delight in you judging, especially when it's judgment to life, basically telling someone their faults. But he also says, if you do these things, they're going to turn back that same judgment onto you. So you see how this word doesn't return unto him void? We're now judging David as though we're judges and we're more righteous than David. And so he's dead. So it's not judgment to life. It's judgment to death. As I said, if you don't understand the terminology in which I'm using, check back that video to understand the full reasoning behind this. He says here the salvation is far from the wicked. We've also talked about, you know, Jesus coming to save everyone. He's coming to save those who want to be saved. 
How does he save someone that thinks they don't need to be saved? How does he save someone who thinks they're well? He can't. He, there's no benefit. He only heals those who are sick. So with that being said, it says here, For they seek not thy statutes. So they don't even care to know about God. They don't care to know about the fear of God. They don't care to know why God is and why they put why they are put on this earth. They don't want to know their calling and their election, sure. They don't want to know the greater mysteries of life. They don't want to know how to look at a woman and not lust and want to divorce and want to do all this. They don't want that kind of power. They don't want to know how to take a hit and turn the other cheek. All right? So they don't care for these statutes. Although the word is there, the evidence is there showing the power of God, they're saying, eh, I don't, I don't care for it. I'm good where I'm at. So that's how David could say this. So 156, great are thy tender mercies. O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgments. You see, so he did not just say, now quicken me from thy law. Or, you know, go ahead and look at just the statutes here. He's looking at judgments. He's saying that I walk such a personal walk with God that when I do something wrong, he judges me right then and there. I don't need to wait for afterlife. I don't need to wait for all that. He judges me right then and there because his hand, as you will read in other scriptures, his hand was strong upon me, right? So he says, but great are thy tender mercies. You remember, you ever hear someone saying, you know, we want the sure mercies of David? Well, that also comes from Psalms because we understand that the mercies were so great because God could have seen his heart. God could have seen that this man was not a man that was going to look back and say, well, you know, God has blessed me with so much. Let me look back and see what things I need to go back to, what things that I could do again and get away with. He wasn't about to try God. He doesn't like trying God. And when he tried God, he was quickened to ask forgiveness. As you've heard in that one scripture where, you know, you could just see it all over. Um, so let's keep continuing. I really want to get this point to you guys. So what's so wrong in Psalm 119? This is continuing. 157, it says, Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. All right. David, you're not so righteous because, you know, you've done this, you've done that, and you're not as perfect as you should be, given that God said and Jesus said, um, be perfect even as I am perfect. But look here what he says. He says, many are my persecutors and my enemies. Okay, many are the people who don't like me. Many speak badly about me. Many want to kill me. Many want to persecute me. Many are playing to be friends, but they're my enemies. But yet, Instead of him leaning to his own understanding with his army, with a sword, knowing that God fights his very battles, as you heard in, in many scriptures, 1 Samuel. And so he says here, I do not decline from thy testimonies. So what he's saying is, I don't lean to my own understanding. I don't leave the fact that you said you will fight my battles for me. I'm not going to forget that you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So in 158, I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. He looked at sinners and he felt bad for them. He grieved for them. So instead of him saying, you know, laughing at the people, the enemies when they fall, the transgressors when they fall. He's saying, I was grieved because they didn't keep your word. He wanted them to have life, although these transgressors are transgressing against God, right? And if he's transgressing against God, he's transgressing against the people of God. So he's saying here, I don't even delight in them falling. I just want them to keep your word. And then in 159, it says, Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Not according to his will. Not according to all the stuff that he's done. But according to thy loving kindness, quicken me. All the things I've done is nothing, he's saying here. 
But just consider how I love you. Because.